What is going on guys? Jack here and welcome back to episode 143 of the Rise to Glory here with Gibraltar Apex and today we have for you guys the Champions League first knockout round against Real Madrid. We're going to be starting off with a tie away from home. We then have the return leg at the Space Park and well, it could have been an easier tie, couldn't it really? Real Madrid, they are the kind of the top dogs in Spain. You can see they've won the league a million and one years in a row. Gary Monk, former AC Milan manager, makes a return again in our save. Uh, it seems to be a recurring figure. Now he is managing, as you can see, Real Madrid. I've got Daniele Russo, also a kind of returning figure, a player we saw at the start of this year uh, in the testimonial special. He is going to be playing against us today, and if I'm honest, not really looking forward to that too much. Anyway, in terms of Real Madrid's route in the Champions League, because I guess that is of interest, because of course we did finish top of our group, um, they must have finished second in their group, and if we take a look... We'll try and find it. You can see that they were drawn in the same group as Bayern Munich. And they actually proved to not be kind of completely unbeatable. They got 10 points from 6 games. We, of course, got 13 from 6 games. So slightly better, although I think it's fair to say we had an easier group. But um, that does give me some hope going into today's game. Anyway, in terms of fixtures since the last episode, which was the Senior League Cup quarter-final against Gibraltar Lions, we've played a lot of games. You can see them here. Um, kind of your standard results, really. There's nothing too revolutionary going on here. I do think it's worth noting that um, Dues and Rildo have been banging in goals for us, though. That's been something that's been really nice, uh, particularly in the last three or four games. And the reason for that being is that uh, Mosca, who, as you'll see, is on the bench for today's first leg against Real Madrid, has uh, been out with an injury. He was out with a groin strain for three weeks. So that was a pretty big miss for us. He is kind of back, but not quite at full fitness today. As a result, he will be on the bench. And uh, yeah, all in all, kind of domestically, things are just kind of going to plan, really. Anyway, looking at our team, something that certainly isn't going to plan is the injuries. And we kind of knew this was going to be a problem before, and a lot of players have now received recurring injuries. So you may remember, I think it was the Porto game, both Bouchard and Paul Smith were both out injured. Um, they're both out injured again. As you can see, Joe Bouchard out with a back strain, which he kind of picked up at the start of February. Uh, and of course, Paul Smith also out. He is out for about two months. He got injured on international duty for Australia. Strained knee ligaments he received during the Asian Cup, uh, which actually Australia did win, even without him present in the final. So uh, the, anyway, those Bouchard and Smith injuries, kind of big deals. Uh, worth noting, Junior, who of course broke his leg at the start of the year, uh, he's almost back to full fitness. You know, a few weeks left out. May well make a return, though, for the second leg against Real Madrid. So potentially something to look forward to there. Anyway, if we just have a look at the match preview here, of course, Real Madrid never going to be an easy game. Uh, they're predicted to maybe play a similar shape to us, which could be kind of interesting. Uh, in terms of our team for today's game, it's I don't want to say it's full strength, but it's a very good team, even with the kind of three key players for us really not in the side. I feel like Paul Smith and Bouchard, perhaps two players who were key players a few years ago, perhaps not so crucial now, but certainly Mosca, who, as I mentioned, is only on the bench. Um, kind of the big player for us, I think it's fair to say. Anyway, in goal for today's game, we go with Ludwig Jung, the Swede in between the sticks. Nothing new there. He's just He does a job for us, doesn't he? He turns up every week and seems to do a fairly good job in goal. At left back, we have Murphy Cabasele, uh, the Belgian. Looked very good at left, uh, left back this year. His opposite number over on the right-hand side, Gaiganov, has had a fantastic year so far. The 26-year-old Ukrainian signed a new deal at the club, a four-year extension, which I'm pretty excited about. Uh, and it, I believe it also has the three-year extension clause. Okay, it doesn't, but um, still, four years, a really nice extension, I think, to get for him. Um, and yeah, de delighted about that. And uh, another reason I'm really proud of him is the fact he's got 24 assists in all competitions, doing an exceptional job at right-back for us. Anyway, in the centre-back position for today's game, we go with Jorge Assad and alongside him, Mustafa. Uh, Assad's had a very good year this year so far, an 8.24 average rating in all competitions. Mustafa, an 8.11 average rating in all competitions for him. Uh, I love these two guys as centre-backs alongside each other. Worth noting, Ramadan Mustafa edging ever so closer to the 100 caps for Egypt mark, which would be an absolutely insane achievement for him, really. Anyway, looking up at the midfield, the box-to-box -box midfielder role, we go with Krzysztof Wolski, the Polish player, of course, joined us this year. Um, and he's been a really big addition for us. You'll, of course, know it's been the January transfer window. This transfer window, I didn't sign anyone. We have £50 million transfer budget and £200,000 left on the wage budget. And as you can see, our kind of club balance is going up and up and up. Um, which is obviously absolutely incredible to see, but I didn't spend any money. So we will probably have a fairly large amount of kind of cash to potentially splash um, 
kind of in the summer transfer window, which might be something to look forward to. Anyway, at the right centre mid position, we go with Gilvan. He's back from injury. The Brazilian has had a torrid time really over the last few years. But he is back for today's game. Hopefully he can give a good performance. He's been fit for the last month or so, which is nice. Uh, centre defence in mid for today's game, we go with Mini Mosca. The youngster, of course, still trying to bounce back really from that broken leg last year. It really did impact him badly. Um, and no, I'm hoping this guy is going to kind of continue to improve. As you can see, perhaps some doubts from my assistant manager. However, prior to his injury, he did have a lot of potential being touted his way. So... Uh, I, don't, I don't really know what to believe there. My assistant is a liar one way or another. Anyway, at centre attacking mid, we go with Sebastian Girard, the 21-year-old Belgium, banging in goals at international level, been banging in goals for us as well at club level. 19 goals for him and 13 assists. And leading the line today with the kind of uh, Mosca injury is going to be Walid Duz, uh, the Belgium. Again, done very well this year. He's been banging in goals for fun. 14 goals in 14 games in the league. Also worth noting, he's got 13 assists and he's actually got 29 goals in all competitions. So he's doing great. And alongside him, Rildo, a player who, you know, you know with Rildo, I brought him in to be a really good backup. And the issue I have with him is he always wants to play first team football and I kind of have to go with my... Um, kind of best team, I guess, which is Duz and Mosca with Girard in behind. But this guy, he's always asking for football. Where Mosca comes in, he always steps up to the plate. And it's really hard to drop him at times, because you can see he's got 16 goals in 11 games in the Primera Division and 19 in all competitions. He's only made one appearance in the Champions League as a start, and he has also got a goal, so hopefully he can turn up big for us today. Anyway, that is going to be our team for today's game. A few minor changes to roles in our 4-3-1-2. I did, elected to switch Girard from a Trek Quartista to an attacking midfielder. And uh, we've also changed uh, Gilvan from a roaming playmaker to a deep line playmaker on support. Anyway, let's submit our team for today's game. Mildo is going to take the captain's armband. This is a big game for us. Apparently, draw is written all over it. Real Madrid, fairly large favourites, but we'll see what we can do. Mosca, the top goalscorer in the competition, absent for us. A massive miss, really. And I, I do find it a little bit interesting the, looking at it. Real Madrid, they're going to try and mirror us. They are going to pretty much play a very similar system to us in any way, in many ways. This could be an interesting one. Either way, of course, to get to the knockout stage of the Champions League is really, really good. Two years ago, we reached the semi-final where we lost. Last year, we got knocked out at this stage against Benfica. I do feel like this year, we've been particularly unlucky to get drawn against Real Madrid. But ultimately, you've got to beat all the big teams if you want to win a Champions League. So why not start now? We'll see how we get on. Uh, of course, we've got to be ever so careful of Daniele Russo up front. Um for Real Madrid he's just a terrifying player there really in this kind of away leg we're looking to get an away goal if we can looking to get ourselves and um, not necessarily an advantage in this kind of game I, d I don't expect us to necessarily uh, kind of hold out for a draw Ludwig Young has broken a finger uh, uh, what's my I think my assistant said to sub him off as soon as possible oh god do I want to bring in Salcedo I'm going to have to, aren't I? The Mexican's a good player, the 22-year-old, but he's not Ludwig Young quality, right? We're going to have to do that. What, what I was about to say before the injury was basically that in this game, I don't necessarily expect us to win and kind of go unbeaten. I think the big challenge really for us is to try and get an away goal and keep the goal margin, if we can, to just the one goal. I feel like at the Space Park, we have a lot more potential to really go out and kind of explode and uh, give just an incredible performance. Whereas in this game... It's going to be a bit more back to the wall, I have a feeling. And, well, so far, it very much has been that. It looks like it could even get to half-time um, with the score at 0-0 and without a single highlight, which, to be fair, in some ways, is actually quite beneficial to us. Anyway, I'm going to tell the players they've been unlucky so far. I'm really going to try and motivate them. I think it's fair to say that Real Madrid have had the better of the play. Of course, we have got Mosca, who we can bring on. And, well, Duz has had a pretty poor game so far. He's been a little bit nervous. Rildo's also had a poor game, though, so... Really not a great game for our strikers. I don't think the service has been up to par, so perhaps slightly unfair to judge them too much. But um, no, it, it's an okay first half performance. Nil nil. You know, I would have taken that. We do need to defend set piece as well, though. The ball comes in. Mustafa committing a foul, and while we have shot ourselves in the foot, having defended so well in the first half, really limited Ramage's chances. We give away a needless penalty from the corner. And now we look towards Salcedo, the Mexican, to try and make something happen for us. It's going to be Grumel to shoot. And Salcedo saves it. The hero. He's on off the bench, the Mexican. He makes a save, although there might be another chance here. Real Madrid with the ball for Diop on the ball. Switches it. Gives it to Gaikanov. Can we break now? Can we use the momentum of that penalty miss? That's what we've got to try and do. 
Real Madrid, though, with the ball here, looking like they want to bring it forward. What a save that was by Salcedo, though, from the penalty. Really nice by him. Real Madrid, big ball over the top. Mustafa wins it well, of course. Mustafa, he's got some redeeming to do, having given away that penalty. But no, now Daniele Russo, don't let him get inside. Salcedo with another save, a really big stop there by him. Uh, the Mexican in goal. Palmy wants to change the system. This just isn't really working at the moment. The thing is, my options are kind of limited in how I can change the team. Um, what do I want to do? That is the question. Palmy wants to switch to the 4 2 3 1. Actually, I think that is what we're going to do today. Who's not performed? Rildo's had a really poor game. Let's get Mosca on for him. Um, Part of me wants to hold on to this last sub, but at the same time, I kind of I need to use it while I can. Um, the midfield's been pretty poor as well. Um, everywhere, really. Do I, I mean, to be fair, Volsky's had an okay game. Do I want to use all my subs this early on? How good is Gilvan as a winger? He can kind of play winger. You can kind of, I'm going to play him as a winger for now. We will probably change that um, later on and bring in Jose Maria. But I do want to hold on to that last sub just temporarily. Either way, the tactical change hasn't taken effect yet. And actually, Real Madrid coming forward with the ball. Vermez whips the ball in and it's Loral at the back post. And I don't want to say that's shocking defending, but it's not great. A free header at the back post. No one covering. We are, of course, making a big change now to the team. It's a shame that we couldn't implement that change just a second sooner to prevent this happening. But Vermez at right back. I mean, I don't know if you can accuse Cabasali of letting the ball get in easily, but it's just it's just pretty poor defending. Salcedo's positioning in goal is not great. Perhaps needs to be trying to meet the ball there. I don't feel I feel like if a player gets a volley from inside your own six yard box, your keepers perhaps at blame somewhat. Either way, though, one 0 it's okay. It could be worse, but we've really got to kick on if we can now in this game. We have, what, 20 minutes left? And it is Real Madrid on the attack here. Vermes. Let's not let them get another. Daniele Russo pulls it back. Saved. Salcedo. That's a nice stop. That was a clear cut chance for them. I think they hit the crossbar there initially, and then Salcedo picked it up. 15 minutes left. 1 0 would be okay, but, well, Real Madrid, they're on the attack again. Salazar. Or Salazar. Cabaselli's got to get there. Vermes with a shot. Hits the outside of the post there, Real Madrid. And now, uh, well, we live to fight another day. Let's make our last change really quick. It's right at the end of the game. Let's just hold on now, I feel like, for this. Let's go and counter. Three minutes. Three minutes to hold on. Two minutes. That should be... Should be that. Should be that, I hope. And it will be that, I think. I hope. Please don't do this, FM. 1-0 I'm happy with. Anything worse, and I'm going to be a little bit disgusted... Russo shoots, Jose Maria, it's in the box, don't let them get the shot away, Mini Mosca, no nonsense, gets it clear, 1-0, not a great result, but it could be worse, the lack of an away goal could be troublesome, we know that we're probably going to need to win by two goals, um, assuming we concede, but you know what, that's okay, Cal uh, Salcedo did a really good job coming on um, to obviously save the penalty, the Mexican, I'm hoping that broken finger isn't going to make Ludwig Young out for the second leg, 67 weeks, while well, Salcedo is going to have to play then, isn't he? That's really bad stuff. Either way, we have got to play Real Madrid. As you can see, that game is not for a little while. It's about three weeks away. We'll, of course, be back for that game. Hopefully, you guys stick around. 1-0, definitely not the worst result in the world. Hopefully, we can go to the Spake Spark and make something special happen. And yeah, I will join you guys in just a second. Okay, guys, so we are back here for the second leg against Real Madrid. Pretty big game for us. 1-0 in that first leg. Hopefully, we can bounce back. Since that game, just four matches to tell you guys about, or in fact, three matches to tell you guys about. Um, a 4-0 win started things off against Leo FC. We followed that with a fairly convincing 3-1 win at uh, Gibraltar Lions away from home. And then we beat Cannon's bottom of the league with a fairly rotated side. 6-0, Mosca getting a double hat-trick. I mean, if there's a way to go into this game against Real Madrid, it's to have your striker who was out for the first game and on the bench firing on all cylinders so I'm kind of hoping he can maintain that level of performance today in terms of our team players coming back to fitness which is nice Mosca and Dues up front you will notice uh, an absent name and that is Sebastian Girard he uh, strained some knee ligaments and he's out for three to five weeks so that is a pretty big miss for us and of course Ludwig Young also out injured in goal as a result Salcedo the Mexican coming into the side a player we signed for a few years ago now he's been a fairly kind of decent backup I brought him in mostly off the potential that was being touted his way from my scouts in truth he's never really quite lived up to that 
that billing, but I still feel like he's a fairly good kind of backup goalkeeper to have. And uh, he also classifies, I do believe, as being homegrown, which is, of course, useful. Anyway, let's submit our team for today's game. We're going very much with a similar shape as you guys saw to the last game. It's going to be a 4 3 1 2. Real Madrid playing a very defensive 4 2 3 1 here. Um, quite, kind of interesting how defensively they're playing. Hopefully, we can maybe capitalize on that. But this is going to be a tough game for us. Uh, the 1-0 result is an okay one, I guess, after the first leg. It becomes a not-so-great result, of course, if we concede one goal. Uh, the reason for that being is that we'd need to score three on the night. And really, I do find it unlikely that we are going to be able to shut out Real Madrid for the entire game. So I do have this sneaking suspicion, perhaps, that we are going to need three goals in this game to really make something happen. Either way, early on here, Real Madrid have a chance. They've hit the woodwork. I mean, that's a warning right there. We cannot afford to switch off. Uh, kind of from set pieces like that, fairly deep free kick there as we did. And, uh, well, we are let off the hook ever so slightly there. Either way, though, it's, a, it's an okay start to this game. It's a lot more 50-50 in terms of the chances. Possession definitely going Real Madrid's way, but they are playing a very compact formation. Not committing a lot of men forward, so that's almost to be expected. And, um... No, we're, we're doing okay at the moment. 35 minutes gone, just that one chance within the first three minutes. Um... And, well, we might have a chance here just before half time. Five minutes left to the half. Cabasele down this left-hand side inside to Volsky, who switches it to Gaiganov. Nice play here. Gaiganov beats his man. Can't get in the cross, unfortunately. Now Daniele Russo, number nine for Real Madrid. The player to be wary of, and he will pick up the ball here. He's got no one in support, although he will switch it quite well to Grumel there. The one man alongside him. And the ball back into the box. Salcedo, it's a beautiful save. It looked like it might have gone over the line, but the Mexican has stopped it very nicely there. And perhaps a warning shot with, uh, well, two minutes left of the half, Real Madrid. With the ball bringing it forward again. And Salcedo with a nice save there. He's gonna probably going to have to make a few more this game. Real Madrid, Gromel on this right-hand side. Don't let him get the ball into the box. He beats his man. Assad with a nice tackle. Now Volsky bringing it forward. Can we get the ball up to Dues? He flicks it on, but no one there. Now with Vermeers at right-back, the German. Volsky picks it up, though. And now, well, we have possession somehow. Lots of... <laughs> Loose balls here. Is a team going to put their foot on it? We have a chance here. Gilvan Mosca beats his man and slots it home. What a finish that is by Mosca. His 54th goal of the year. That was really nice. He like nudged it around his man. And well, we get a goal right before half time. That could be a big one in this game. That was a really nice finish. Gilvan just threaded it to Mosca's feet and he just he just nudged it around his man here beautifully. Opened up the angle. Tucked it into the bottom corner. A really nice finish by him. And that should, unless there's a goal very late on in this first half, give us a narrow lead. And indeed it will. A really good first half performance. Looking at the stats, Real Madrid, yes, they've edged possession. Yes, they've had the clear cut chance that we didn't have. But we have had a fair share of shots. We're doing okay. And um, can't complain about that performance. Mini Mosca on a book is perhaps a little bit of a concern for the centre defence in mid. He's not actually had the greatest game. And I think we're going to bring in JJ. Yeah, we're going to do that. I'm going to bring in JJ to play. Uh, it's worth noting that Paul Smith is on the bench, as is Rildo. So we have got some options to really mix things up. Paul Smith, of course, been injured for a few weeks now. Not 100% match sharp, so just got him on the bench for this game. But so far in this game, we've done okay. That was a very speculative effort by Volsky there. Set piece for Real Madrid. It comes in. It's saved away, I think, by Salcedo, the Mexican. And, well, that's a let off. Real Madrid with a free header at the near post there. But we've dealt with it. Of course, if the score stays as it is now, this game would be going to extra time. Do I think that's going to happen? If I'm honest, probably not. But um, I think there's a goal in this game one way or another. Looking at the stats, it looks like it could come our way, really. We've done pretty well so far this game. Dues hasn't had the greatest game. I think I'm going to take him off and I'm going to bring in Rildo uh, to replace him. So we'll go with Rildo and Mosca, kind of the Brazilian pairing up top with Gilvan just behind. Gilvan... A player who can very much play that attacking midfielder role. He's played a deeper role, really, for us a lot of the time. But today, he's done a fairly good job. He got that assist, of course, for the Mosca goal. And he is kind of that linchpin in our midfield, really helping transition between defence and attack. Anyway, both our fullbacks on bookings, perhaps something to be somewhat wary of. But, um, well, with one sub left, we can't really afford to waste it. Is it one sub left? I'm pretty sure we have one sub left. We haven't used two, have we? I don't think so. I can't, I'm not even sure. Either way, we're on the attack. It doesn't matter. Cabasale cutting inside. Switches it to Gaikanov at right back. Can he get in the ball? Moskas there. It's in off the crossbar. What a finish that is. An absolute thunderbolt from absolutely nowhere. It's gone in off the underside of the crossbar. It's Gaikanov the right back. He passes it to Moscow. Hits it on the volley. Bang! 
Hits the wow! Hits the crossbar. Hits the ground. Bounces up into the roof of the net. He hit that with so much power. Do we go defensive now? Do we go? Oh my gosh! I hate these dilemmas in FM because I know that people will rip me to shreds in the comments if I don't go defensive. I'm staying on attacking. I'm staying with this. Rildo, finish that. Let's go! Come on! Three nil. Let's go! Right now we can go defensive. Now we can go and play on the counter. Let's just. Set everyone a little bit deeper. We have used two subs, of course. We took off Mini Mosca uh, at half time. But no, right now we, we can just go a little bit more defensively uh, on the whole. We don't need to throw a load of men forward. Uh, let's just sit back and see out the last remaining bit of this game with the two goal margin. Um, don't look for the overlap. Don't need to close down quite as much. We'll time waste more, I think. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're gonna be disciplined here, and we're just gonna try and see out this game now. We have a two goal margin, of course. One goal for Real Madrid here, not enough. They need two, and of course, then they would go for an away goal. There is no chance of extra time here. Mosca has been incredible. Rildo the sub as well, really good goal by him. Good composed finish. A bit of a mistake by Real Madrid, and that is that. I think a minute and a half left. They've scored. I mean, Real Madrid. They have a very outside chance. Have I talked too soon? They've got, what, 70 seconds to get another? I mean, I'm a little bit nervous. It's a free header. Salcedo in goal doesn't really know what he's doing there. He hasn't gone for the ball, but he's decided just to kind of wander out a little bit. And he gets lobbed. But that's going to be that. 15 seconds left of this game. We're going to go 3-3-2. Three, three, We're going to beat the Spanish champions. Mosca's been absolutely incredible in this game. That second goal by him was so good. 3-1, three, 3-2 three, on aggregate. That first leg, you know, I said that I kind of fancied us to maybe get something if we got 1-0. It's a really good kind of classic Space Park performance here. Mosca, man of the match, man of the moment. He got a double hat-trick in the week against Cannons. That was the, the, the prelude for this game right here. And, uh, well, we turn around that deficit to knock out Real Madrid. The fans are absolutely loving it. And, um, yeah, we cannot complain about that one little bit. We are going to have the Champions League quarter-final draw coming up in a second, so we'll have a look at that. We set a new record for gate receipts. I know someone's going to ask me about how Gibraltar Lions and College Roper did in the um, in the Europe. As you can see, Gibraltar Lions actually got knocked out in the Europa League group stage in Group E. We just load this up real quick. Uh, we can have a look at it in all its detail. Um, so yeah, was it Group G? Was that was that the group I read? No, it wasn't Group G. Which group was it? Well, this is awkward. Find 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 them. There they are. Okay, so they finished actually third in their group with Napoli and Swansea, which is a pretty tricky group, uh, and they got seven points there. So that's a pretty good by Gibraltar Lions. How did College Europa do? I'm going to assume they finished bottom of their group. They did. They finished bottom of Group L. They were the, the whipping boys of the group, which isn't surprising. Um, but no, College Europa, they're sitting on a lot of money. They should be able to start to sign some good players now if they can consistently reach the Europa League uh, kind of group stage. Either way, though, that was an absolutely fantastic performance against Real Madrid. Let's get forward to the cup draw if we can. We've got the quarterfinals coming up. We've done better than we did last year against a much tougher opposition, I think, in Real Madrid. They do have a very good side, a terrifyingly good side. We managed to shut down Rildo, uh, shut down um, Daniele Russo. Rildo wants to leave to play first time football, uh, to play more first team football. I'll just, I'll just tell him he's going to play more then, because uh, well, if he can get goals like that one he got in the Champions League first knockout round, he's going to be worth keeping around. Of course, his goal was the difference um, after that late goal by Real Madrid. Right, quarter-final draw. Who do I want? I don't even know who's in the draw. Let's take a look. So there's Bayern Munich, Everton, Schalke, City. I mean, it's a very tough year. <laughs> um, I mean, we've not out Real Madrid, the Spanish champion, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind Barcelona. Dortmund are the holders of the Champions League. Bayern, how good are Bayern? Bayern finished second last year in the Bundesliga, so they're a good team. Schalke might be one of the weak links, although they finished third last year. Schalke's probably preferable. City have a good team. Everton, I'd probably take on Everton again. I know we lost to them in the group stage 3-2 and then drew with them 3-1. But um, they could be worse. Either way, it's going to be tough. It's the Champions League. You expect it to be tough. I almost want to do it the hard way. And, uh, well, <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, well, we're going to have to do it the hard way because we've got Manchester City, a team who... Knocked us out a few years ago from the Champions League. Oh my gosh. So we're going to now go take on the, the English champions. Brilliant. Brilliant. Well, okay. Manchester City it is. That'll be next episode, I guess. If we look, they won it 
well, three years ago now. Oh dear. Right, well, that's the game that you guys are going to be looking forward to then. And that's not going to be fun. Uh, if we look here, that's not for a little while, that's not for another month, so I will see you guys for the, those games then. Uh, as always, if you did enjoy today's episode, please do smash the like button, it does help me out. If you've got any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And other than that, it is me, Jack, and I will talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.